Hey guys, this is Dan Williams from Range of Motion. Welcome to this special edition of Romcast where I'm joined by gymnastics coach and subject matter expert Kyle Holmes. Uh, Kyle is a gymnastics coach and ex-gymnast himself and he's also one of our subject matter experts at the upcoming Range of Motion Athlete Camp. Kyle will be running four modules, um, all pertaining to gymnastics on core, pressing, pulling and muscle ups. Last year at the Athlete Camp, we were lucky enough to have Kyle on the team and the camp attendees rated his modules an average of 9.58 out of 10, which is massive. Kyle, thanks for joining us. No worries. Thanks for having me. Um, so for people who don't know you, I know there won't be many because I know you're, you're pretty big in the gymnastics world. For those of, uh, people who don't know you, tell me a little bit about yourself as, as an athlete, maybe your athletic background and also as a coach. Yeah, so uh, like you said, I was a semi-professional gymnast until the age of uh, 14, 15, uh, then sort of, you know, found CrossFit in my early 20s, uh, gave that a bit of a crack for a while as a bit of an athlete, but a few injuries sort of held me back, uh, which then I got into the coaching side of it and found that a little bit more rewarding. So I work for CrossFit Gymnastics on seminar staff, traveling around Australia and, and New Zealand, and basically... Yeah, just make a, make a go of it through that. Excellent. Something I'd like to cover today, and I want to keep this pretty simple, I'd, I'd like to cover some content that is going to be really valuable to, to a whole range of people irrespective of their level of expertise or any sort of baseline competency that they already have. So what I'd like to do is, is unpack maybe three different points, three different tips that you can give to people which will allow them to improve their performance by 10%. Now, I know there are lots of different areas of gymnastics, but maybe some common themes. So I would like to know the three easiest things that, that someone can do and maybe then an example for each of these so we can actually explore a practical example of someone doing this. So what would be your first tip to improve someone's gymnastics ability by 10%? Yeah, so the first tip I'd give is just going back to the basic model for CrossFit and focusing on your mechanics first, then consistency, and then adding the intensity later on. Uh, we need to be able to create high-quality movement first before we then add intensity and fatigue, which is often missed a lot during during WODs. People just want to skip to the end and add intensity before they're ready. And an example of someone who you've had some success with in really focusing on these mechanics? Yeah, so uh, I used to work with a lady called Jackie uh, back at Niche. Uh, we had a bit of a chicken wing through our muscle up that wasn't really going away back in the day. So we decided to strip it right back and focus on her mechanics first to get rid of the chicken wing. I actually made sure she didn't do any bar muscle ups in wads for about three months until we could clean everything up. And it's been almost two years now, and I haven't seen a chicken wing for a very long time. So That's right. it's good. Do you think it's sometimes difficult? Because obviously everyone has a bit of ego, and they want to do more reps, or they they want to finish with a faster time. How do you get around that that ego issue of okay, we're going to take a step back, but in the long run, you'll be able to take multiple steps forward. How do you approach that? Yeah, like you said, it's it's all about selling that vision and trying to make them understand that if they put the work in now, they're going to benefit later on. But if they don't take the step back, then potentially they're going to be in the same position a year, two years, whatever that is later on down the track. And hopefully that sort of gets it through to them that there needs to be a bit of a change. Excellent. Tip number two. Uh, practicing your movement outside of class. Uh, so lucky to think how many people will go and grab a barbell and practice their snatch movement outside of class like it's very common to see someone put in an hour of work on that but it's not so common on the other side to see someone put in a pure hour work of just trying to make their gymnastics movements more more virtuous or or get stronger mm. so practicing outside of the wad do you think there's a perception maybe with some of these maybe the lower sort of level gymnastic skills things like your toes to bar or your push-ups or your handstand push-ups, do you think there's a perception maybe from people that these are limited by someone's physical capacities, like their localized muscular stamina or endurance or their strength as opposed to it being skill-based, maybe like a snatch would be? Yeah, I think the, the perception from my end actually is that uh, people think a lot of it will come easily due to it just being a body weight movement. They think, you know, just because it's my body weight, there's no external weight that 
you know, it's actually quite easy and I don't need to put the extra work in when it's actually the opposite. Um, there's a reason that, you know, professional gymnasts are training 26 hours a week, morning and night from, from the age of eight. You know, they're not just doing it because they want to. It's hammering the basics and working the strength outside of what they need to do is, is why it's so important. So of those 26 hours that a pro gymnast would be training, how much of that would you say is training and how much is practice, if we can distinguish between the two? Well, we would train uh, three or four mornings a week, and those mornings would specifically be strength work. So we wouldn't be doing any apparatus training or our routines or anything. It would purely just be basics, whether it's upper body, lower body, flexibility, whatever that may be, but that's so a good maybe 10 hours at least, so almost half of the training was just purely basics and mechanics. Tell me someone you've worked with who has benefited from this skill practice outside class. Well, not one person per se, but back at Niche, we actually had our gymnastics strength and our gymnastics skill classes. So these were either 45 minutes or an hour that was purely dedicated to either the strength side of gymnastics or the skill side. So more often than not, this was under low intensity, like, like I said before, where they were able to break the movement down and work on specifics rather than just trying to hammer the one skill over and over again and not actually get anywhere with it. Tell me your third tip. Yeah, so the third tip is actually working inside the right rep ranges. So I'll take this back again. Uh, it's very common to see someone with you know no muscle up or one muscle up just constantly trying to over and over again to get the skill and they never actually achieve consistency. And if we t take that to a weightlifting example, that would almost be like you trying to improve your deadlift by only lifting at 90% plus every single day. Um, gymnastics movements are no different. They need to be broken down depending on what the athlete needs, uh, whether that be neuromuscular adaption or anatomical through hy hypertrophy ranges. It's the same principle applies. You can't just work the skill over and over and expect to get better. Do you think maybe people struggle with this because, again, using that example of a deadlift, if, if someone is trying to build a 100 kilo deadlift, they inherently know that they should start at 20 and then 40 and it will gradually increase. Um, and it's a very clear path of this is what I want to lift, this is what I can currently lift and there's almost a linear progression there where you just, next time you lift more and then next time you lift more. In gymnastics, it's not always the case because it's not just, well, I will do this movement with less weight, but maybe there are more regressions. Do you think that's part of the struggle for people? Yeah, I think just taking back to what we said before, just the sort of the stigma behind the thought that because it's your body weight, you know, it's easy. You should be able to lift your body weight rather than knowing that you have to break it down. So that's part of the big thing we teach on the gymnastics course is trying to break that stigma and give all the, the progressions, regressions that we need to get people into those rep ranges because it's not often thought about. Tell me a story about someone who's, who's achieved some benefit from this. Well, yeah, so at Niche back in the day, you know, think, taking a ring muscle up, for example, you know, people just see a kipping ring muscle up, but they don't see the swings beforehand, the, the uprise, the pull to the hips, you know, the ring dips, the turnover, all those, you know, positions of just holding, holding your supports and, and pull-ups and things like that. So there's, there's so many ways you can go about attacking things like a ring muscle up rather than just trying to do the skill over and over again. Great. So we are lucky enough, as I mentioned at the beginning today, to have you as one of our subject matter expert coaches at the Range of Motion Athlete Camp coming up in September 2019. I know we'll be covering a lot of what you've just spoken about. Paint me a picture of the sort of thing that the attendees can expect to take away from the four modules you're running and the sort of work they'll be expecting to do with you during the camp itself. Yeah, so... Like you said before, starting starting with your core work and then transferring onto your pulling, pushing, and muscle ups. Hopefully, what I'll be able to do is is paint a bit of a story. So, starting with the basics with the core, you know that's usually one of the hardest modules, especially on the gymnastics weekend. And then learning those skills and then trying to then transfer them over into everything we do. So, hopefully, by developing their coach's eye a little bit and their athlete eye, and starting to understand a little bit more about how their body works they'll be able to then transfer, you know, your hollow and your arch stuff into things like handstands and pull-ups and toes to bar and, and muscle-ups and, and starting to understand a little bit more about how the, the human body moves. It's basically how it's going to go. Great. If, 
if there's someone attending and they're nowhere near getting a muscle up, so maybe maybe they're they're still working on scaling options for a pull up, let alone getting to the point where they can do full muscle ups, is there going to be something for them there? Absolutely. So one of the biggest things that I find from the CrossFit Gymnastics Weekend is, yes, it's very humbling, but more often than not, it lights the fire within people to to start working on it. You know, rather than just seeing a strict pull up as something they can never get because they've been stuck on the same band forever and they're just not getting anywhere with it, they'll start to see regressions that they can use to then hopefully move them closer towards their goal. There's there's going to be some steps in place rather than it just seeing like a a goal that's just so far off that they'll never understand. Um, I really love that word you use, like it's a story, like there's a natural narrative there. And and I think the beauty of that approach is no matter where an athlete or an individual is on this story, whether they're just opening the front cover and they're on page one or whether they're in that final chapter, they're going to be able to slot into that story and get a huge amount of benefit. And irrespective of where they are, there's going to be a point and you can just move them a chapter forward through this narrative, through this story. Yeah, and that's, that's the biggest thing is having little goals along the way, not just trying to jump uh, from, from the start to the end, mm. um, just ticking things off along the way and basically getting better and improving each day. Excellent. Yeah, look, I mean, we're, we're super lucky to have someone with your experience and expertise at the camp, and I know that, that a lot of people are really excited to get that opportunity to work with you. Uh, in the meantime, I know you're pretty active on social media, online. If people want to have a look at the sort of work you do, both as a coach and an athlete, what would be the best ways for them to find you? Yeah, so um, check out my Instagram. So Kyle Holmes, uh, the handle is curlherms underscore. Um, on there, posting drills all the time. Uh, just hopefully there's a, there's a lot of content on there that people seem to enjoy in terms of breaking skills down. So get on there and have a look. Excellent. Cool. Uh, thanks very much for your time today, Kyle. We're, we're pumped to to work with you in September. I know that our camp attendees and, and the athletes are super keen to learn from you. Uh, and again, we're super lucky to have you on board. Thanks very much for your time today. No problem. See you in September.